Moises Naim, the end of power, from boardrooms to battlefields and churches to states, why being in charge isn't what it used to be. Step into the shifting landscape of power dynamics as explored in the, the end of power, from boardrooms to battlefields and churches to states, why being in charge isn't what it used to be by Moises Naim. In this book summary, you will learn about the erosion of traditional power barriers, the impact of advancements in technology and society, and the decline of political institutions. Through detailed examples, ranging from global politics to business and religion, the summary illuminates how the once mighty are struggling to maintain their grip on authority while smaller players are increasingly disrupting the status quo. The Shifting Distribution of Power The increasing concentration of power among the world's elite has prompted protests, but a closer look reveals a shifting distribution of power that affects everyone. Power is the ability to make others do what you want, but it is also relational and bound by barriers like military might, access to resources, and brand recognition. However, these barriers have become weaker in the last three decades, making it difficult for the traditionally powerful to maintain their positions. Anyone, even the most powerful people and organizations, can be ruined in a heartbeat. This has led to a drastic shift in the nature and distribution of power that affects how we interact with each other and the world. The Paradox of Control The world is changing at a rapid pace, with an increase in the number of nations, wealth, products, and human fulfillment. However, as people gain more control over their lives, they become more challenging to govern. The abundance of choices people now have is making it impossible to exert strict control over any one area. Leaders, therefore, face new challenges in ensuring loyalty, exerting authority, and staying relevant with an increasingly informed and educated population. The paradox of control is that as people become more fulfilled, they become more challenging to control. The power of mobility. The use of walls to distance people from the rest of the world is no longer an option in today's globalized society. High-speed transport, low cost of international communication, and ease of money transfers have made it easier than ever for individuals to move across borders. Governments are struggling to manage this mobility, and citizens have more opportunities to voice their opinion by voting with their feet. In contrast to the Cold War era, where East German citizens had limited options and were trapped behind the Berlin Wall, people now have the freedom and ability to seek out better living conditions, economic opportunities, and participate in political processes. The Changing Shape of Values In recent decades, liberal values such as individual freedom, transparency, property rights and fairness have gained widespread acceptance, as the emergence of middle class in formerly poor countries have led to higher expectations for a better standard of living. Marriage, once considered a conservative institution that represented the highest bond between two individuals, is now viewed as obsolete, as divorce rates increase in both liberal Western societies and conservative Gulf states. Trust in authorities has declined over the years, and citizens are demanding more accountability and action. The Arab Spring of 2011 resulted in uprisings that forced many long-standing leaders to step down. Overall, there has been a remarkable shift in worldwide values, as societies evolve with the changing times. The Changing Landscape of Political Power Governments are losing power as democracy spreads, leading to higher power sharing within nations. Politicians face greater pressure to act due to more frequent elections. Technological advances and increased transparency give individuals more opportunities to exert political pressure outside of traditional institutions. All of these changes have reduced politicians' freedom of action, making them less effective leaders. The Rise of Micropowers Micropowers with limited resources are challenging megapowers in armed conflict due to the proliferation of weapons and military training to non-state actors. Lines between soldiers and civilians are blurred, making it difficult for traditional armies to target the right opponents. Meanwhile, micropowers have access to new diplomatic instruments, such as veto power and short-term alliances, which enable them to challenge the decisions of broad coalitions. 
These developments have drastically increased the success rate of weaker sides in asymmetrical armed conflict from 11.5% to 55%. The rise of small businesses. The traditional barriers that favored large companies over smaller ones are eroding. In the past, large companies had the advantage of investing in production technology, having numerous branches, and a reputable brand. However, cheaper technology and increased access to information have leveled the playing field. Small businesses now have the ability to obtain high mobility of capital through crowdfunding and other special instruments. Consumers are also embracing new products from fresh, young brands with no reputational scars. A 2010 study found that all companies are more likely to face a reputation-damaging crisis within the next five years than they were in 1990. As with politics and war, power dynamics have shifted in favor of smaller players. The changing face of power. The world as we know it is changing, and with it, the concept of power. It's not just politics that is affected, but also other areas such as religion, philanthropy, and media. Religion is becoming more fragmented with new churches eroding the importance of traditional institutions. Philanthropy is also changing with influential individuals taking over from established charities, diversifying the field. The rise of new information technology is also changing the dynamics of media, with traditional sources losing their grip on information dissemination. Technology has given ordinary people the power to be reporters, and the control of information is now in the hands of anyone with a camera phone. The future implications of these developments remain uncertain, but it is clear that the power structures we once knew are no longer the same. The risks of erosion of power. The erosion of power has both positive and negative effects on society. While it brings freedom and increased market competition, it also breeds disorder and frustration. Stability and predictability, necessary for a minimum level of order, cannot be guaranteed when power dissipates quickly. The absence of a powerful international authority hinders reaching important global agreements. The inefficiency of new players due to lack of experience poses a threat to large organizations. Finally, the incentive to invest in crucial issues decreases when the long-term consequences are not clear. Low-effort contributions like social media activism take away from effective solutions. The erosion of power indeed has some risks that should be considered. Embracing the erosion of power. The decline of power in institutions and major players such as nation-states has resulted in radical changes that require us to shift our perspectives on the distribution of power. This book suggests being cautious of terrible simplifiers, such as leaders with dangerous ideas who play on irrationality rather than making rational arguments. To combat this, political parties and leaders must be strengthened through increased participation, transparency, and accountability. By making parties less hierarchical and more networked, they can be perceived as indispensable and mobilize the masses to respond to challenges of the 21st century. In the wake of unprecedented changes in global power dynamics, it becomes crucial to embrace the positive aspects of this evolution without falling victim to its threats. Naeem suggests a change in perspective on power distribution and maintaining vigilance against terrible simplifiers with dangerous ideas. The key to navigating this new landscape is to increase political participation and strengthen political parties by adapting to our highly networked world, making them more transparent, accountable, and effective. Restoring public trust in political leaders will empower them to better address the challenges of the 21st century, paving the way for a more resilient and adaptive society.